So this is going to be a short video. I wanted to give a little update on the things I have changed on this Launchpad API framework I'm kind of playing around with. So one of the biggest changes is I added another project in this mono repo called Liftoff. And the point of this is basically you can run your Liftoff command and have it automatically deploy all your code to a mono lambda and have that mono lambda eventually hosted behind the API gateway with a URL that you can use, right? So I'm trying to make this as seamless as possible where you have an API you want to get deployed to Amazon and you basically run like one command to do it. So let me walk you through the entire setup and deployment process for you. So let's just go ahead and make a directory called like test API and go ahead and CD into that. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a launchpad project. So if I just do npm create web dev code slash launchpad, that's actually going to pull the code from this create package and it's going to spin up a project in the directory that I'm currently in. So what this is doing is basically cloning, it's setting up a, a brand new package.json file and then it installs the launchpad dependency and then it grabs the files that are inside that launchpad directory and kind of pulls over some template files, puts them in your directory and then it kind of cleans up and deletes some stuff. So that's all done. It also pulls over a Prisma schema and it sets up um, your Prisma database as well. Okay, so let's just go ahead and open this up in a new code window so I can kind of talk about the actual project. So now you have a project that you can run. So the npm run dev, and that'll host your Launchpad API. And by default, the template has two routes. I have a git to do's and a post to do's. And it comes with Prisma in a schema that's already set up so you can kind of store these to do list items. Okay, so let's load up Thunder Client here. And I'm going to go ahead and make a new request. I'll say like HTTP localhost 800 or 8080, and I'll say to do's. Right at the bat, we got an endpoint we can hit to basically get the to-dos that are in our system. And then also we can send a payload over. I'll say text is uh, hello. I'll go ahead and send that over and we get back a response. Let's go ahead and hit the get request again and make sure that those to-dos are being persisted. So that all works. So another thing out of the box that you have with this is some type of API test. I only provide two that basically create a to-do item and then kind of verify that you can get it back via your API endpoints. Hope you can kind of expand on that. But the main thing that I change is once you kind of set up a project, if you follow the proper conventions of exporting this app variable here, you can actually get this deployed to Amazon with a single command. So the idea is I can say mpx liftoff and go ahead and run it on this directory, right? Um, it looks like I need an app prefix. So I'll just go ahead and put one. I'll put um, WDC example. This is so you can scope the proper things in Amazon because I do believe it's going to create your Lambda function. You want to scope it by like dev or prod or testing region. I'll just say US East one. Okay, so there's a couple of environment variables. I need to clean up this user experience because it's kind of annoying that you have to keep running it over and over again. But that's going to pull in the liftoff scripts and then run them. So right now, basically, it's bundling your API using ESBuild under the hood to kind of make a single executable there's some hacky stuff I had to do to get this working. I'm not a fan of the way Prisma is set up. There's like some weird stuff I had to look into where I had to copy the schema file into every subdirectory of the routes. I don't know why. And then also like in Prisma, if you want to run a Lambda, there is a, a binary that you have to copy into two places. Um, I think it's because I'm doing dynamic imports and I'll kind of share that with you in a little bit. But at this point, everything has been deployed to Amazon, right? So a single command, you run liftoff, it automatically deploys all your code to a Lambda. Okay, so let's go over to my functions here and let's view the one I just created, WTC example Lambda. And what we could do is we can test it with an example event, right? I haven't set up the API gateway yet, but if you go down here, you can actually get an example API gateway proxy. And let's go ahead and modify this a little bit. Um, I'll go ahead and just copy this. We want this to be to do's, I'll do a get request, to do same idea, I'll just replace these things. And then the last one over here, let's again do a to do's. I didn't really look into like which one you actually need to update, but let's just go ahead and save this. I'll call it my test event, click save. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to test. So let's just click test. And that's going to actually invoke the API Lambda with this event. And the event should actually run some code. Now there is an issue. I do think the cold starts take longer than three seconds because unfortunately Prisma is actually kind of slow. 
Prisma has a Rust binary that has to kind of initialize and run. So I'm going to at least put it to 10 seconds and save this. And let's go back. Let's go ahead and click test and hopefully keep your fingers crossed this will work. Um, either that or my API is just broken. Hmm. Okay, so when you first try to test this, this is actually failing because there's a lot of environment variables you're supposed to have set up. Um, so I would have to go and set that up. But I do have something that's already set up so I can kind of show you. This is basically another um, function which is set up to point to a Supabase database and it has all the other environment variables that are needed. I, I plan to automate that. I want to kind of like read your .env file and just automatically push those to your Lambda. But if I go ahead and do the same test, basically, that'll hit the to-dos endpoint, and we should hopefully get back an array of to-dos, which in this case, there are none in the database, so you don't really get anything back. But that's the idea. Um, again, I focus a lot on just like, is there a single command you can run to get this all deployed to Amazon and have a URL that you can actually start hitting to... Uh, use your API. So let's look at liftoff and I want to kind of share something interesting with this um, project. I basically use ChatGPT to write all these bash scripts. Like I did have to kind of read through them and modify them a little bit time by time, but a lot of the stuff in here, like I just leveraged ChatGPT and told it like what to do. For example, like when I first run this liftoff command, um, this is going to look for the liftoff command that's specified in this bin property. So scripts deploy. Let's go ahead and look that one up. And what this is doing is checking if you have the right environment variable set up. And if you do, it runs compile project. And compile project basically does a bunch of hacky stuff to create temp directories, create out directories. It runs ES build over your files. It sets up some type of serverless library we need to wrap your express library and host it in AWS Lambda, and then it installs your production dependencies. It then does a Prisma generate so that you have the Prisma types, and then it runs it under ES build with platform node. Um, and then I did this other hacky thing where the way I have the API set up, when you first make it a request to an endpoint, it then goes and dynamically imports your ESM modules and kind of initialize the code that way. I don't know if this is a good approach. It seems like it works okay, and after that first initial load, it's pretty fast. But I had to basically loop through every single route and run ES build on each individual file for some reason. Um, and then I had to copy the schema Prisma to every single directory that has your routes. I don't know why I have to do this, but Prisma is like hard coded to use your current working directory. And for some reason, when you do like a dynamic ESM import, like a, um, let me show you if I do like an import here. So like right here, when you when you make the request, there is a await import, which is doing a dynamic module import from a an endpoint like this. But when I do that, for some reason, the code initializes and it can't find Prisma because it's like doing a different current working directory. I need to kind of figure that out because it seems really hacky. So I had to basically take files and push them in directories. And then I had to... Uh, Let's see what else we're doing. Okay, then we zip it, right? So we take all the files and we zip them together, which basically puts them in a temp directory here. Let's go over to temp, out. Um, actually here. So here's a zip that we're actually uploading to Lambda. And that is being created by basically the staging temp out directory. And I just put all those files into a single zip. And then I got to deploy this stuff, right? So now there's another script that I leveraged ChatGPT to help me write, where basically I just use a bunch of AWS CLI commands to create a role, it attaches a policy to the role, it kind of creates your Lambda function if the function doesn't already exist, or it'll update the function if it does exist, which is this while loop here. And then finally, it will basically verify that the function has been created down here. And like all this stuff, um, again, it's like pointing to that zip file that we create. It's naming your function based on the environment variable app prefix. Uh, it's kind of scoping all the roles and policies with that app prefix as well. And, um, and as far as like, if you're actually like following along with this project, I did change some of the things with like how you set up your, your APIs. And I did change something with the project, the, um, providers. So previously I had like this inject thing and like some symbols and it worked good locally, but when you deployed it to AWS and the way I was doing the dynamic ESM module imports, it just broke everything because I guess there's two separate contexts for your symbols and when you create new symbols in the actual endpoints that are dynamically loading in the symbols don't point to the same things as the symbols that you created in this file 
So I say, you know what, let's just simplify this. You know, just provide a providers object and put your functions here. And then I kind of modified all the TypeScript to give it type safety so that inside your handler here, you can actually just say providers dot, and then you get access to all those, right? So those are all your lower level implementation details that you don't want to just basically import at the top of your files. I'm trying to basically inject those so it makes it a little bit easier for testing and it's more maintainable in the long run. So that's kind of how that's happening. Prisma and to-dos, I don't think anything special is going on there. Yeah, and other than that, I mean, I kind of updated the readme a little bit to uh, describe some of these changes and show you how you can deploy. So if you guys have an Amazon account, like an AWS account, and you just want to try deploying this out, I would definitely appreciate it and just give me some feedback of like, hey, this, this works pretty good. It's actually pretty easy to get something deployed. Or if you run into snags, again, I'm developing primarily on Mac. And typically what happens with bash scripts is like they're not going to work on Windows and stuff. So if you're on Windows and you run into a bunch of issues, I mean, let me know. Um, but... The idea is just I'm trying to build something cool for myself, and if you guys benefit from it, let me know, and I'll keep working on it. All right, that's all I want to share with you all. If you guys want a place to hang out with other developers and just you know find a place to ask questions if you're stuck, feel free to join my Discord. The link is in the description below. And like always, have a good day, and happy coding.